Good morning, God bless you family. It is a great day. And as I am making it my mission to say, I'm going to say I love you and I'm excited to be here and to share that with you as we get started. You will need your Bible today. And as always, you will, let me just be clear, you need it every day, everywhere you go. A hard copy of your Bible, excuse me, of your Bible. And as we do start off in prayer, today is no exception. So Father, today in the name of Jesus, we give you the praise and the glory for this word. May every word be you, Father. I thank you that you are permeating the atmosphere today by your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. We're moving forward in this time in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, today we're going to examine 10 things that you must quit. Now, it sounds really kind of funny because I'm the one that when my students come to me and they want to quit, they say, well, I'm thinking about quitting that I will tell them, well, quit, just quit now. Don't procrastinate on quitting. Don't come back tomorrow and quit. Just quit now. Be, be, in, be a proactive quitter and just quit. You'll be glad you quit. Just do it now and leave. <laughs> and then they come back tomorrow because they weren't expecting that. And then they don't quit. However, there are some things that we need to be aware of and alert to that we can quit so that way we can be living better lives. Many of you are not even aware of some of the things that are happening around you or in you or to you because that's the ploy of society to get you unaware of what you are doing. However, we're going to start off. I got, I got a few things on my list today that we're going to get to. And I'm going to give you some demonstrations of things that will open your eyes so that your relationships are better, your health is better, your work environment is better, and all around you are better. And who doesn't want to be better? So let's turn to the book of Numbers. And I'm going to show you this. And the first thing you need to quit is complaining. Now in Numbers chapter 14, verse, we'll just start off in verse 1. That night, all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness, why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, We should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Well, yep, go, bye. Because one less person complaining is one less noise to hear, right? <laughs> now, what's interesting about this is that complaining, what, what comes through complaining is a transformation, transformation of the atmosphere, a transformation of the perspective, a transformation of the entire environment, a transformation of your body, because what comes through complaining changes everything within your body. The cortisol drips, all the serotonin is gone, then the endorphins are, are all messed up. Everything within the body is changed. If you are in a circle around other people, then they too want to take that on. Oh, well, I remember when, I remember da, 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 da. No, just quit. Just quit. Do everyone and yourself a fa and the Lord and just quit complaining. Is it really that bad? Is it really that bad? I mean, I've shared with you before the time when my pastor, in the gentleness of, of how he preaches and delivers a word that, that I remember just telling him, I said, I, I'm struggling with where to record and this and this and this. And, and, and I, I mean, I'm just having a little meltdown. And he says, you know what I hear? I said, tell me. He says, I just hear a lot of complaining. <gasps> oh, I just repented right on the spot because... Um, the fact that I have walls should be enough to not complain. I mean, people have just lost their houses in, in disasters. What are we complaining about? The price of food? Well, yeah. But you know what? We could take that to God, pray that God increases us as we increase, and, and God will move. So what's, what really is it that we gain by complaining? Nothing except feeding our flesh. We need to be feeding our spirits more than we feed our flesh. So... Number one, stop complaining. 
Nobody wants to hear it. And you don't even want to hear it either. And there should be a there should be a recording of that so you can just some somebody do this. Just do an undercover. An undercover undercover operation where, where where you have your favorite complainer in your life and you just record it and then let them play it back. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something, right? But it doesn't get us anywhere. It did not get the Israelites anywhere. They spent 40 years going in a circle. I've already told you, I think NASCAR started from, from the Israelites that they just go around in a circle. But here's the thing, is that they ended up back at the same place doing the same thing, expecting different results. And those results can't come until we start re until we start using our mouths to start speaking something different. Until the song is changed, the end of it will be the same. So you want a different ending to your story, we'll start writing the, close that chapter and write a new one. And as you begin to speak different, then everything else will be different as well. And, and you will feel different. And your circle of people will also be different. Now, turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Verse 9. Now, I want to start off in verse 5 because I want to tackle this in, in a way that is appropriate. So, in verse 5, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. Well, amen and amen. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's laws, nor, so, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God lives within you. Okay. The thing we need to stop or to quit doing is pretending. Pretending all of the things that we have been pretending. And I'm going to say this in a way that we want to be led by, by the Spirit. Yes, we see it here. You are not in this realm of the flesh, but in the realm of the Spirit. What's interesting is this. You can be in the realm of the flesh and still be fake and pretending. We need to knock the fakery. Stop pretending. Just stop. Quit. Just put down. Just quit pretending. Quit pretending. I've said in a few, a few messages ago, you were the only one that is ignorant that every, everyone else sees the mess that it is. Stop pretending. You need help, get help. Stop pretending. Stop the fake religion. I just have plan. It's fake. It is nauseating. It is fake. Quit pretending. If your hair is a mess, your hair is a mess. I wash my eye twice a week. Whatever. Move on. It is what it is. Dry shampoo. We're done. We don't need to spend three hours. I mean, if it takes three hours and y'all just need to pray for me, quit pretending. Our society is so filled with pretenders. And what's happening in Dubai regarding all of this is so sad because these women on social media are prostituting themselves and it's all fake. And they're doing it for handbags. And they're being used as potties. And I'm saying that on purpose because that's what it is and this is a known thing that people are now starting to talk about. Our society is so fake in pretending, pretending, pretending. Put down the fair maze and the fake spade. Put down the folux and the frada. Put it all down and be you. You want to live in a small town? Live in a small town. You want to be you? Be you. But you can only be you. Many of you have molded yourself into some form of fake, all this fake, fake, fake. You don't even know who you are anymore. And I remember when somebody asked me, what does a Christian look like? I said, you look in the mirror. I said, what do you mean? I said, look in the mirror. You want to know what a Christian looks like? Look in the mirror. Stop the fakery. I mean, some of my dearest friends used to skateboard with Tony Hawk. And then they'd go to church after they rid rode their skateboard to church, carrying the skateboard in church and got judged. 
They're them. They are, they, that is a Christian regardless. You don't need to conform to an image of Christianity. You already are. So quit the pretending. Just quit it. You will get free when you quit trying to conform. I'm supposed to do, quit. Just quit. Do you, God, and all of us a favor and quit it. You want short hair? Whatever. You want long hair? Whatever. I might not really say get a man bun, but that's just a me thing. The Bible does say, but, you know, not specific with man buns, but about the length of hair, that's between you and God. But all the stuff in society that is all fake and fake and fake, it is destroying your identity and your image in Christ Jesus. And it is not his best. So give yourself permission to quit all the doing and the fussing and the this and then this. And while you're in the quitting, the pretending, quit apologizing. Quit. I'm going to add that to my list. That's number 12. Hold on. We might have to come back to this one. Because this is something I'm going to come back to. Quit pretending. Now, this next point, and I pray this just, just relieved some of you. Because you are awesome right where you are, right how you are. And, and a lot of you have endured a lot of spiritual abuse at the hands of those trying to mold you into some fake image of a Christian. Yet you are worse off than you were when you started because you don't know who you are. And you're miserable singing the fake, all of it, fake, fake, fake. Quit pretending. Just quit pretending. Now, we're just getting started. I pray, I pray you are ready for this point because this is a point that I know that I'm really going to be treading on water and I'm okay treading on water. I will walk on water for this message because this is so profound. We are going to save marriages with this one here. Turn to Song of Solomon. And then read it. Now, why am I saying this? I'm going to tell those of you. Now, here's the fun fact about Song of Solomon. <laughs> they weren't married. <laughs> they weren't married. Now, why am I sharing this with you? This is a mini crisis, but it's still a crisis nonetheless, like mini in the big scheme of things. Fatherlessness is the biggest, but quit having boring sex. I'm speaking to those of you that are married. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And I'm saying this because, and I'm, and I'm like I said, I'm, I'm walking on this but it's been men and women alike that this is what happens, that, that they, they engage before they're married or they are married and then they go to church. Huh. Oh, and then it all ends. You got to get out of that bondage and rebuke the bondage and the guilt that has been placed over your sex life. Because it is, it, is, it is rotting your marriage. You know it and your spouse knows it. You just don't have any yet talked about it. So play this part. Let your spouse hear it. And do what you need to do. I'm telling you this because I have counseled people in this arena that have come forth frustrated, and I'm choosing my words uh, to be a little more diplomatic for, for a said purpose, okay? But they've come forward completely frustrated because what they once had, 
that was enjoyable, that was so much pleasure, that was beautiful within the sanctity, and all of them are married, but coming forth that it was great. We had this, and our sex life was this, and we did this, and did that, and, and they don't know back, and this, and that, and it's all great. It was fabulous. And then they went to church. And then now, well, you know, every other month, this might happen, and, and now it's got to be with, with the lights off, and it's got to be this, and, and now it's this, and now it's this. What happened? Well, they went to church. And they don't really talk much about this within the confines of, of church. I get that. I'm going out to help you. Because it happens more with women than it does with men, but the men are the ones that are, that are um, I don't want to say suffering, but are losing out or missing the fullness of what once was. And so there is no shame. And we've got to remove that because read Song of Solomon. And when you read it, act it out. Get with your, get with your spouse. Like stop the religiosity because that bondage of that religious spirit that is now having you now believe that you're going to be more holy if you do this, this, or this than where you were. It's not. It's putting you in bondage. You are not enjoying yourself. Your spouse is not enjoying themselves and or himself, herself. And it needs to stop because religion will do more damage to you in your relationship with the Lord than anything. So we've got to get out of religion. Now, if you are not married, I'm not going to go advocate to just stick yourself out there everywhere and all that because people are nuts. Let's just be clear. And, and if you're non-vaccinated, if you're vaccinated, you got to vet somebody and go through those things and do not just make, oh, somebody bought you dinner. And so... Did they did they buy you dinner with a ring for life or did they just they just bought you a little steak? You are worth more than that. And if she's crazy, you leave. You already know what the red flags are. I'll set all of these things aside for another time because this will. And if you're not married, read Song of Solomon so that you are entering in in a healthy way. Okay, we're speaking scripturally and biblically, not in a way, but, but society is so masked with so much addiction to pornography that pornography is what's happening is married men and women are turning to pornography for a fill and it's not fulfilling and it's causing a lot of damage with the body, within the body, with the emotions, with the brain and everything else. So we have to correct these things and God gave everything necessary for his pleasure on this earth. Your spouse is given to you for pleasure. You are honored each other in that. It is not a weapon, it is not a tool, and it is not to be used against one another. That is something that comes in in certain times that we have to break off. And that, that spirit of pornography is really moving in and it's destroying relationships. It's destroying young boys that they don't even know how to look at a girl without, without thoughts of usury. And the young girls don't know how to not be used because they watch it and they think that's what boys want. And so we've got a society of really messed up people that are buying pocket items that they can stick to the wall and use that are just not quite what we need to be moving to advance to. We've got to be moving in a place. So quit, quit getting involved in religion and quit getting involved in pornography and quit having boring sex. Get in, get in the mode or mood with your spouse and get to that place where your marriage is reignited and do it. Just do it. Not Nike. Because Nike got it from the Bible, by the way. Just do it. In however, whatever way. I'm saying this because we are losing the art. People have lost the art of lovemaking. They've lost the art of connecting because it's intimate. Anybody can have sex. That's easy. That's easy. Intimacy is not. And... A lot of people are silent in this subject and on this subject because of shame and guilt and remorse. And we've got to remove that. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. It is normal. And I'm talking, as I said, in the confines of, I'm not telling you to go, just go pick up somebody off the street. That's not intimacy. That's just an act. And y'all are worth more than that. Preserve yourself. But if you are married, Read Song of Songs with your spouse.
open up that doorway for what you once had that you shut the doorway to for all the reasons that you know. And if somebody in the church leadership wants to make you feel guilty, rebuke that and praise God that you are free to engage in the confines of what, of what you have been blessed with. Because let me just say, you got a hot wife and you got a hot husband, and there is no reason for two hot people to be missing out on all that hotness. Amen? So, and then report back. <laughs> How can I not say this? I will tell you this. And we're just going to have a little bit of fun here, okay? Because this is just this kind of message. So I have some students years ago, and, and they're kind of asking a few questions about women and men. And so it's in the confines of communication courses, which is what I teach. So I explained to them, I said, look, learn to listen, number one. Learn your spouse. I said, but I'm going to give you an exercise that will transform your relationship. So then I, and they're kind of, whatever, you're just talking. I said, how many of you want more sex? Well, of course they're all gonna raise their hand. I mean, right, they're all, they're all in. No problem, great. Sit down with your wife. You can set a time of 15 minutes, bring her to you, and just stare into her eyes for 15 minutes. 15 minutes may be a long time. Try 10 those of you with short memories or short attention spans. You're gonna do nothing else but just stare at her eyes. They kind of look at me and some are kind of like, thinking like, I said then report back. <laughs> it was just so awesome coming back to class and seeing, they didn't even need to say anything. Because I said, now do you see what you've not seen? I said, now, now you get what I'm saying. And, uh, and they were excited and it was fantastic. So there's a lot of these things that, that we just are looking beyond where we are. And in the confines of that, I mean, and these were married, married students and, and the other ones, I said, you can't do that with some chick off the street because she's going to think you're weird. So you got to save that for the one you love not the one that you love right now. You want that for Miss Right for Life. And, and so I'm saying this because there's a lot of things we need to quit doing, which is just moving so fast. We've got to quit in, in, the, in the level of getting to get and not really getting to be in, okay, in the moment, in that place. So there you go. So read Song of Solomon and enjoy and look at each other. You will see that dynamic change. Now, Turn with me to Proverbs 1 5. We kind of spent a little bit of time there, but you know what? I've been praying about this for quite a long time because it really bothers me how many people are, are married and, and, and not really enjoying uh, what they should be. We've got to fix that. That's why the divorce rate's so high. And also, I might, I might be so bold to say it's probably why that there are four times as many topless and nude bars in Dallas than any, anywhere in the U.S. I think. There's kind of a little correlation here. Proverbs 1, 5. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance. Let the wise listen and add to their learning. So the next thing you need to quit is listening to negativity. Negativity is not going to help you learn anything that will bring anything good into your life. How could it? When people engage in watching the news, okay, and I shared this from a previous, a previous message, there's a lot of things that happen. First of all, most of it's negative, and it's designed on purpose. It gets people all upset and furious, and then they go on going to go post this and post this and post this, all this stuff. But what do you gain in your life, excuse me, in the direction of your life by listening to negativity? It does not breed anything healthy or good. And it's related to the complaining because anybody complaining is really not bringing anything, anything good, right? It's all, we are surrounded by a society of negativity and it's incredible 
even even within the body of Christ, how easy it is. Well, you know, that message just didn't really do it for me today. I didn't really, you know, I didn't really like this. And, and you know, the tie just wasn't, we could do better. Why? There is good everywhere. There is good everywhere. What you choose to feast your eyes on will be what you speak about. You feast on the negative, well, it will be it, but you need to quit because it will steal your life away. It's just going to be drawing you near to then just drag you away. You do not have time for it. The wise listen and add to their learning. I've said this before, but it's a very true statement. You can tell where someone's at by the size of their library or their TV. You see where someone's interest is. Is one add to their learning and one is taking away. Most of the wealthy do not watch endless hours of Netflix and all the shows. You know why? Because they're the ones that produce them. <laughs> for everyone else to consume. They are the ones that are acting in it or making money while everyone else is in this place. So we have to really start taking a look at what really, where, where am I going? What am I listening to? Is it bringing forth fruit in my life? Your life is so precious and there's so much good in your life. And if you don't like it, then change your, change your perspective. You don't like the circle that you're in. If there aren't creative miracles happening in your circle, you need a new circle. Just change the circle because they are. I'm surrounded by them. They're always good everywhere. We have to be moving in that place to get it and see it. We have to be moving to that place, which leads me to my next point. You need to quit living for everyone else. What do I mean by this? Well, society kind of has a conformity. Society wants you to be ready for 2030 and get prepared and all of the things that they want to do. So what? That's their agenda. So what? I don't give a rip, right? When you move in that way, that's their agenda. Okay. All right. What's God's agenda? There is a plot to get people to be living uh, to others that you will eat crickets or bugs, whichever the, whichever the bug of the day is. It used to be what the, the um, soup du jour. Now it's like the bug du jour. And, and no. <laughs> no. So when you are making all of your decisions at the bequest of fulfilling other people's happiness that aren't happy, it will never work. Much of society is trying to turn everybody into the same, like a big fat gap khaki commercial. I mean, how boring is khaki? Can we not get, I mean, it's great, but can we not get any more creative than khaki? I mean, really? But everybody's conforming to be living under the guise of something that isn't even the something that God called them to be. That cannot be you. It cannot be. You are not called to live. And I remember when the Lord spoke this to me very clearly. You were not called to live at the sacrifice of others. Christ already did that. You are not called. Now you may say, yes, I'm a mother. Yes, you are your mother. They're grown up. Yes, they are grown up. As they are growing up, you still are a person with an identity. Many in the church will lie to women and say, well, you want a whole person until you're married. I heard that for many years. You know what it does is it crushes women. It destroys women. It destroys them in such a way that now some earthly man dictates their value. Like, there's a lot of dumb earthly men out there. Are we not aware of this? Um, especially when there's so many great women out there. So we might say, okay, well, what's happening here? So what ends up happening is that women live at the bequest of, of whether or not their value is by a, an earthly man that may or may not even be the one for her. But you know what? So long as he's it, then that's, then that's all that matters, right? So they may say from some religious standpoint that now, uh, so now she's living based upon the identity of someone else, not realizing that God has an entire set purpose for her, that, they, that you are complete in Christ Jesus. 
You are complete as a whole person in Christ Jesus. The ring does not dictate your identity. It dictates a status or a role in your life. Who are you? Well, I'm a child of God. Whether I'm married or not, I'm a child of God, first and foremost, period, end of story. I'm a, I can say, okay, I'm a wife, but that is, but that is not, that is, that is a role in my life. It is not the identifying factor of why God created me. God created me to be in a relationship with him for his pleasure. So when we start living at the bequest and the underneath of, of other people, well, now where are we? Where, where are we? Many men, you've done this as well, living to fulfill some kind of idea that if you get this and this and this, then you'll be valued and that she'll want you when she really doesn't. She just wants you and you for you. So we have to quit the falsities of society and get to what, what God's word says. His son died on that cross so we could be free. Now, turn with me to Proverbs chapter 5. Another thing to quit doing, we're going to start in 1. This may not probably apply to everyone, but it still needs to be said. My son, pay attention to my words, turn your ear to my words of insight, that you may maintain discretion and your lips may preserve knowledge. For the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as gall, sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps lead straight to the grave. She give, gives no thought to the way of life. Her paths wander aimlessly, but she does not know it. Quit paying for comfort and companionship. You are worth more, and the Holy Spirit is right there. From the time of lockdown till now, more people have, have, have made food their best friend or companionship in some form or fashion, whether real or not, their friend. And quit doing that. You are worth more. And, and by the way, um, most people aren't going to tell you because you are pretty good at covering it up. These are some of the secret things that nobody would know about but rest assured that God does and God sees and he has better for you it's very easy especially for those that live alone nobody would know during lockdown the, the country of Italy gave everyone well through Pornhub everybody had a free access I mean what else are people gonna do well I got a whole nation of people occupied We could do better. There is so much to give God the praise and glory about. And when we move in this way and you begin to see the presence of the Holy Spirit and you engage with the Holy Spirit in his word, then you will see that those earthly things that are trying to creep in are ploys and temptations of the enemy. And when you move and you move in a way <coughs> to where you are, excuse me, in a way of health, and you're moving forward, then those things you won't need. Don't allow those things to be a crutch. And the Bible also continues on. It says, he who has a, an affair is stupid. <laughs> I just, in this particular version, it just makes me laugh. He's not, he's just stupid. Well, yes, because if you get or get found out, a, a man's a man's fury would be raging, and rightfully so, right? The Bible says, don't touch another's wife's, uh, another wife's uh, breast or bosom. It's very clear in Song of Solomon. Okay, so there's another reason to read that. But we get that. What are I going to pay for companionship or comfort? Two things never invest your money on, which is not investing, it's wasting it. Now, turn with me to Genesis chapter 3. We're moving forward as we should be in Genesis 3. And it's always easy. This is so easy. I mean, it's easy. It's easy for all of us. But I want you to turn with me to verse 9, 3, 9. The Lord called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? 
Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit and I ate it. Oh, woe to the woman. Oh, yes, yes, yes. First instance where we learned blame. We need to quit blaming. Now, what do I say we need to quit blaming? We need to quit blaming others. We need to quit blaming society. We need to quit blaming uh, God. We need to quit blaming the devil. And we really need to start taking responsibility. I know that that's not a real popular message. But yet, most things that I say really aren't all that popular at times. But it's a lesson. We need to quit these things. You know why? Because we're all here. We're all adults. We can. We all are aware, right? But what ends up happening is that there's always an easy way out. Well, you know, it wouldn't be in this place if, if God hadn't done this. Well, um, you, maybe you would. You just didn't have enough wisdom to know that. So we've got to quit the blame game. The blame, the blame, the blame. It's constant and it's rampant. But when we start to go forward, now we can begin to see, okay, God, this is the error of my way. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You revealed this to me. Now I'm going forward. And I can do greater things because now I'm aware that it's not God's fault. And it's not the devil's fault. Not all things are the devil's fault. That seems to be a little churchy thing. A lot of churchy people want to just blame the devil. Well, I did the, the devil. No, no, no. You were the one that made the decision. Are you not? So, okay. Well, then how is it the devil's fault if you're the one that made the decision? You can blame yourself for making the wrong decisions, but then you need the power of the Holy Spirit to heal you of the stronghold of indecisiveness so you can go forward declaring and declaring, I make my decisions based upon the Word of God. But blaming others is not going to do anything for you. Blaming your past is not going to do anything for you. If you don't get over your past, you'll never get to your future. Blaming your parents. Well, you know what? Your parents are your parents. And I will tell you this, the way that I had to deal with that, so profound in how this worked. I used to say, well, I've had a lot of parents, but in this, that, that I had one mother that could love me and wouldn't, and another that would love me but couldn't. Kind of a dichotomy here. But I learned when, when I sent my adoptive mother a letter telling her that I forgave her, she replied back. And she had no idea the pain that she caused me in my life. Now my friends argued, how does somebody not know? I didn't care. My only, my only obligation was to be right with the Lord. And in doing that, what I realized was that every parent does the best that they can where they are with what they have, period. Whether we as children can like it, receive it or not is on us. I didn't like what happened to me. It was a lot. No child should ever go through it. Set that aside. I was free. Blaming everyone else for where you are is not going to get you any further than where you are. We need to deal with this, with this generational curse and, and stronghold of unforgiveness. Because, because most people that are unforgiving walk in more blame than any people I've ever met, and I was one of them. And so as you're going forward, how much of what you are harboring that you are still blaming or something you need to let go? Just let it go. Release it. Release them. Release, release God. Release the devil. Release, release yourself. Just give it a rest already. Just get rid of it. Just release. I release this. I don't need to blame and fuss and da 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 we see, we see these riots and all these things happening today, all these mobs doing this and this and this. Yes, they're acting out. It's because of what they've never not been trained up. They're still behaving in a way. They're just blaming everybody else. Well, you know what? You could be getting a job and doing all this and this and this. You just don't want to because you're too busy blaming everybody else for what an absolute failure that you are because you won't change your ways. Anybody. It's the same for all of us regardless. And I'm not picking on any of these, these, these other kids because I'd like to just... We all know, but we all have to look and take responsibility for where we are and why we are and how we are because it is our individual responsibility. It's not the fault of any, we can all look and make, make, well, you just don't get it. You just don't get it. Well, you know what? 
I do. I was born, I was un, I'm under the average height. I was adopted. I lived in the foster care system, dealt with the CPS, pedo services, and was homeless at 15. I'm really not one person and paid my way through college, all of it. I'm not really one that's going to be on this blame of everyone else because of what I had to walk through. I already did that and released God and God released me and we are good and God is good and grateful. It's the only reason why I'm here because I used to hate him. When we look and we start growing in wisdom and when we start growing in wisdom, we can start taking accountability. Oh, huh. Maybe I need to read my Bible and study myself approved. At least that's what I had to do, which leads me to, let's go to, let's go to Exodus. Three, which is actually kind of funny leading me into this point. Exodus 3. In verse 11. But I'll start in 10. So now go. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Well, who aren't you? See, isn't it a funny thing? So God's giving him this order. Obviously, do you not think if God tells you to do something that he already knows he's going to give you everything to do it? But we make it all about us. I mean, Moses made this all about him. Now, he's old and cranky. We'll give him that so we can have some grace. But we kind of look at this like, come on, man, <laughs> as, as some say. But really, Moses... God puts you here. Just get the job done. But you're a stumbling block. Who, who am I? Who are you not? Moses, God called you. That is the call. You deal with it. You move on. But in every single excuse, 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 excuse. I have a message not yet delivered. A ton of the most biggest excuses, excuse making people in the Bible. Excuse, 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 excuse. Why? Here we are. We need to quit making excuses. Stop, quit blaming and quit making excuses. Quit, there's always an excuse. There will always be an excuse. But you know what? There may not always be an excuse of why you don't get with God right in this very moment. Because it may be that this is that exact moment. If you miss it, you, oop, there it went. God said, I will be with you. <laughs> and here Moses is. Wah, 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 wah. Stuck on self. Stuck on self. Now, here's the thing. Did he feel unqualified? Sure. Was he? Probably. Obviously. Because here's the thing. God equips the called. He doesn't call the equipped. How do I know that? I'm not qualified for any of this. I mean, I, I, mean, I was living my life. And then this. Let me just say. <laughs> like, uh... Good things I got going for me. I can talk, I can write, and I can dress myself. Praise God, I have mastered the arts of that. In terms of all the other stuff, no, it's live fire training, and this is what it is. So buckle up, buckaroos, get on board, right? So God doesn't wait for you to, to get equipped because you never could be because this Holy Spirit has to equip you. Moses just didn't quite get there in that exact moment of thought. But once the excuses, which God had to rebuttal for every single excuse, so do you really want to go before God with any set of excuses and think that God's not going to have a rebuttal for it? <laughs> I've tried that. Yeah, it didn't go so well. Now, let me give you this one. Let's go to, let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 12. we got a lot to quit. I mean, at least I know that I, I had, what did I say? Hebrews chapter 12. I mean, and it becomes when you quit some stuff, you're just like, wow, I got more time in my day. I have more pep in my step. I have more energy. I have better friends. I'm eating better food. I'm not so fat. I mean, this is all great, right? We got to, we just need to have like a quit ceremony every month. Just have a quit ceremony. I'm quitting this. I'm quitting. I am quitting this. Now, 12. 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Oh, so what do you need to do? You need to quit dying. <laughs> quit dying. Wake up, start living. 
Start speaking words of praise. Start living. Quit dying. Unless you're dying to self every day. But quit dying. Quit dying. It's all going to be all right. Just get up. So your girlfriend broke up with you. Great. Great. She's not all that anyway. The next one's prettier. Got more. She's got a better degree. She's going to be going places. She's going to love you. Great. Great. Need a hug? I'll give you a hug. Come on. It's going to be all right. You lost your job. Great. Because there's a better one. God's got better. Great. Oh, my mortgage can't be paid. Great. You know why? Because it's going to be a miracle that God's going to deliver in your life. Some of you are like, <coughs> get it. God's going to provide. How do I know this? Because I went through 10 months of sabbatical with no income, and guess what God provided? In 2008, I was kicked out of a Bible study and went 10 months, and God provided the 10 number of completion. Different levels of faith. Even now, I'm walking in faith because I'm on another sabbatical. But God, but God, it's going to be all right. Just quit dying. You're dying too soon. we got to start living, and if Christ is not worth living for and getting up for, then you got to sort that out. Because he called you to live. Live. Pull out the fine china. Pull out the finest. Pull out the great, beautiful, wonderful things that you will have. And look around. It's great. It is great. There is beauty before you. Hallelujah. Ride your motorcycle. Don't crash. You're not going to. Paint a painting. Get up. Stop dying. Oh, you know, they're going to tell us that. that. Yes. All that may be true, but God, you got to get out of all that negativity that is killing you and get into where life is in Christ, which leads me to Luke. Turn with me to Luke, and this is Luke 12. Fifteen. Therefore, Jesus said to his disciples, oh, uh, Luke, Luke 12, um, 22. Hold on a minute. Oh, hold on. I want to be, I want to be in this one. I'll give you this one. Um, it's Luke 12, 15. Then he said to them, be on watch, be on guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Quit any and all things that do not bring you peace. Quit. Get your peace back. Do everything you can to be living and not dying. Move in a way where every single thing is moving in the fullness. Life is short. We've all been through a whole lot on the whole earth. It is time to tell our loved ones we love them while you can. I used to only be able to talk to my mom via phone, but on the outside of the window, I would go and I'd call her and, and see her through the window in her nursing home. I was glad that I did. I had those moments with her. Many of you are forsaking time and energy and greatness to be focusing on negative, filthy stench that is eroding, and you've got to get your peace back. You've got to get your peace back. Now, I got my two final points of my bonus one that I added here, but Jesus also says in 22, Therefore he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body worth more than clothes. You got to stop looking at what everybody else is doing and what they're wearing and how many followers or fans they have. I just, I praise God for the haters. Because that means I'm going in the right direction. <laughs> because uh, they hated Jesus. If they hate Jesus and they hate me, I'm in the best company. Praise the Lord. Now, do I like those that are encouragers? Yes, because it is, it is challenging at times but I love the encouragers and and they're very special to me but life is worth more 
See, the enemy wants you to be looking at everything else and competing with everyone else. The minute that you take your eyes off God and look at all the other stuff, you're doomed. The flowers, God, God, consider the ravens. They don't reap or sow. They got no store in a barn. God feeds them. You think God's not going to feed you? I mean, some of you look like God feeds you. I mean, come on now. Yeah, I'm fasted since, since whenever. Hmm. I'm just saying. <laughs> You see, it's so simple. We just got to quit. We just got to quit all the stuff and come back. The first, second thing, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, quit all this stuff. It's really that simple when you just slam the door. I don't need to entertain you. Bye. And the final thing, my extra bonus that I shared, I don't know how, 47 minutes ago, whatever. Quit apologizing. Just quit. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have all my makeup on. So what? You're beautiful. My house is dirty and then don't come over. I mean, then clean it. <laughs> I mean, do you kind of, and, and women tend to do this more so than men, even in business, even in ministry, because women are created different than men. But stop apologizing. You don't know anybody except God. If you spent your first five hours of your morning in prayer and your house is dirty and somebody comes out, so what? So what? They're coming not to look at your house unless they're the house inspector. And if they're house inspector, why are they there in the first place? You need to reconsider your neighborhood. However, stop apologizing. Just stop apologizing. Stop saying, I'm sorry, that's a curse. I'm sorry, you, my dear, are not sorry. You are wonderfully and beautifully created by the Father that loves you. You are not sorry. You don't need to keep repeating it and ingraining it within you. That every time you're around, and I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. No, you're not. No, you show up, you're good. You're beautiful. You're fantastic. You are loved. You are cherished. It's all going to be all right. It's the imperfections that make it perfect, which is all within you. The society's got this whole thing about it that we just can't seem to... To, to get. But it's like all okay. When we quit these things, we just quit making excuses and blaming others and just take responsibility and accountability. And you know what? It is what it is. This is the best I can do. God will do the best. God will do the rest and praise God. Stop apologizing for skin color. Stop apologizing. Don't ever apologize for how God created you because that's an insult to God. Don't fall prey. Just stop apologizing for other for what weak-minded people cannot handle. If they're offended, well, we just pray they get over that offense and keep moving. But when you love, they should know that that's out of love, right? Whatever you're saying, how you are. So we're moving to come in the fullness of rest. That's all all right. God's got this. Praise God. Praise God. No need to look at anybody but God. Don't need to complain about anything. He's got this. You're gonna, you're gonna be moving on, and I'm excited for you. So, you get up, and you go out, and you dance in the midst of the rainstorm. Praise God for the rain. It's all right. Put on your bathing suit and get out there and get some sun if that's your desire. Wear your T-shirt from the '80s. Great, wonderful. Just go with it because life is too short to be caught up and all the other stuff. And that today is my message. We came a long way, but that's a message for today. And I still have battery left. Praise God. Surprise him. Father, we thank you today for the simplicity of your word. The word doers of your word. Lord, that we love you. We thank you, Father, today that we can just have praise of you on our lips. That we can come before you right as we are tattoos and long hair and no showers and father we thank you that that we're doing our best and we thank you father that you see our heart father today we give you the praise and the glory for where we are that we may not be where we want to be but we are not where we used to be so we thank you too for that we thank you father that you are the god that loves us so i thank you father for freedom in marriages today that there's a reigniting father within the covenant marriage and the intimacy within couples we thank you, Father, today that there's just a new, a newness that we're here, Father, and we we just thank you that you're helping us be corrected to walk forward. 
We thank you, Father, that it's not really that hard. So in all ways that we have made it complicated, we set it down. And we thank you for the simplicity of living. We thank you, Father, today that you made the way for us, that we don't need to apologize for where and how we are, for we are yours. And we thank you that we even are. So we praise you, Father, for these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And I'm so thankful for each and every one of you and that you're still even listening here. Thank you for being a part of that as well. So you can visit us at julieblaministries.org and you will find out that we do pray every single day at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And we are there. There's people from all over the world that are joining us in prayer. And I invite you to as well. You can either listen by a computer or you can also dial in at the number that you'll see in the comments below. And you can also learn a lot more about what our mandates are, what we are doing. We need, well, there's a lot of stuff that we're going forward to, to be doing for, for the Lord. And in these times, as we are preparing for these things that are said yet to come, but God is good and faithful. And there's a lot of other resources there that you can go to that will help you to come to the place of knowing Jesus and walk in the freedom with him. So that's julieblowministries.org. And if this ministry has been a blessing to you, then please help us by donating or by just giving a dollar even that helps it's only five dollars for us to get a bible for our ministry partners in pakistan and so um you can see more about that at the uh, in our missions we've got a bible outreach program but you can start to see that it, it's not a lot but yet it is because it transforms generations and so wherever you're getting fed be a mindful giver but i do i do say that make sure you are a giver and if you've yet to hit that button, please do so. I don't like pushing any of this at the beginning of our messages. We're about God's kingdom. This too is about God's kingdom. But if you would like and share and subscribe and partner with us, that really helps us. I deliver a lot of messages and this is content that you need. And most of the, there's a lot of content within the content for said purposes that help keep us moving through all of these things in these times and you don't want to miss what it is that the Holy Spirit would be speaking to you through or through me at that said time. So if you've not already, then click the button, please do. And if you have any comments, you can always share those too. And any prayer requests, you can always post those. And be mindful when you ask for prayer to whom you are asking prayer from. You really don't know whether or not it's an AI or if it's a real person or if they even are a believer. So be wise as you go forward. And finally, most important, I want you to know that I love you. I'm so thankful that you're here and that you allow me not only to enter into your devices, but into your home and into, into your relationship on this earth as we're journeying forward. So I thank you that you're just allowing me to be part of your life in this particular time. And so may you be mightily blessed as you go forward. I love you all very dearly and I look forward to what God has next for us because I know it's going to be good. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.